Hey everybody, welcome back to the 26 Acre Maker Shop. I came back down to my friend Lance Balsey's shop here and uh, spent a, I'm going to be spending a couple of days with him here uh, working on a couple of projects. Uh, Lance is not here at the moment. He's uh, you know attending some business and he'll be back later on in the morning. But uh, I'm going to get some filming done this morning showing some of the projects that we're going to be working on and uh, talk about uh, a couple of the reasons why I came down. So uh, really what prompted the visit was uh, Lance had set up a visit with one of the eutectic representative actually the rep for Florida and uh, he wanted to come in and talk about one of the talk about the Udaloy torch and the powders and uh, how they work and uh, you know show a demonstration of them working so Lance had invited me down to uh, you know join that conversation and see the demonstration and I definitely wanted to get in on that because uh, the, the Udaloy torch which is another type of spray welding. You guys have seen my spray welding. Udaloy is another type of system uh, from Eutectic. Instead of it being a spray welder that you know rotates, it's more of a flat uh, type of spray welder for buildup processes on a, on a flat plane. So I've never actually had any training, you know, other than from my dad. So I, I really wanted to get in on this, and uh, it was a great opportunity to come down here and uh, actually talk to somebody from Eutectic and uh, learn from that. It was a learning opportunity. So that's what I did. So that's what we did yesterday. We, uh, we, we had the uh, rep come in uh, from Eutectic and he, um, you know, we, we had a little bit of training with him. It was awesome. He spent a few hours here. We went over some of the powders and, uh, you know, he showed Lance and I uh, some techniques on how to properly use the torch and how to use the powders and what the powders are used for. So I've actually got some footage of Lance and I, uh, you know, doing that training and you, you know, the examples of how to use that over there in the welding area. So I've got some of that footage to throw in there. Lance and I might set up and do some more practice cuts, uh, not practice cuts, but practice uh, welding with that. And uh, we'll, you know, if I got some more, we'll, we'll show that as well. So, uh, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to come down was that there and we'll talk more about that But I also wanted to uh, take the opportunity to bring down some of my parallels and uh, Use the surface grinders over here or Lance Lance will so we got his uh, brown and sharp And of course he's got his Kent over there as well that he does his stones on but he's got his brown and sharp Grinder set up right here that he's you know doing like uh, parallels on and so I brought down all of my best parallels. These are all my parallels right here, including these guys. These are some that I got from Andrew Alexander. And not that we're gonna have time to grind all these in, but my plan was to just bring down some of my favorite ones and if we have time to try to grind them in. So these are some of my good ones right here, my Brown and Sharp 920 parallels. And then some of these in the box right here are my favorite everyday use parallels that I'm always using in the shop. These are some of the shop made uh, W.E. Jones is the guy who made these parallels right here. I've got a, I got a set of, you know, six right here, different sizes, shop made parallels, which Lance absolutely loves these parallels, the way they were made, and recommends that this is something that uh, A bomb should make right here. So I like that idea. But anyway, what I would like to do with these parallels, Lance and I, I'd like to actually take these these guys and inspect them see how far out they are and then if they're out we'll go ahead and hit them on the uh, surface grinder here okay hit them on the surface grinder make sure they're good and straight and flat and then inspect them again and just see how flat and true they are and parallel to each side I've got these guys right here these are some very unique parallels these these look like I-beam but they're hardened and these were given to my dad by Mr. John Rosicki. And for some of you guys that go way back on my channel to the beginnings, you might remember the old jib crane at my old shop. I showed it in a couple of videos. Well, Mr. Rosicki is the guy who built that jib crane. I, I recall dad tell, telling me about that. And uh, Mr. Rosicki had, uh, he, he did machining as well and he had tools and he actually give these parallels to my dad. These were all his right here. And I think it's kind of funny. Property of John Rosicki. And on the other side it says, stolen from John Rosicki. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. So I don't know, uh, you know where this material originated from, but it is hardened I-beam type material. 
and none of them are matched. They're off just a little bit from each other. And then these are some longer ones of the same material here as well. So I'd like to get those ground in. Got the big ones right there. By the way, this is something that Lance owns right here. This is a solid piece of carbide. It's very heavy. All right. And then so we got these parallels I already talked about. I brought my stones back. We might be able to hit those again, uh, you know, just in case. So that's, uh, that's going to be the projects that I wanted to work on. He has been adding to his arsenal. So he's got this uh, KOLE grinding machine right here in the shop and he's been getting set up we've got a little project that we might be able to get get done on that we've got one little piece that we got to make on that and uh, if we got time we're going to work on that he's also got this od grinder right here so he's really been uh you know building up his uh, his arsenal of machines he's getting his uh grinding department all set up over here with his with his grinding machines he's moved the uh, acro lathe over and this is going to be the remember it was sitting right in this area here last time i filmed and he's getting it set up he was just wired it in yesterday when i was here i don't know if he's got it finished but uh he was getting it wired in last video we were uh, working on the g and e so he's been he's been tinkering it with it he's going to take the motor off tear the motor apart and check uh, inspect that see if we've got any work to do on the shaft or the end bells he needs to do some adjustment on the clutch as well but we had a lot of people that really seemed to enjoy watching that shaper footage all right so getting back to the uh eutectic conversation that i had so here is the torch right here this is the Utiloy ultra jet i ended up buying this from the uh from the rep that came and um uh, and talked with us and uh, we ended up I didn't actually film him because uh, we didn't really get any kind of permission from Eutectic on doing an official video and we didn't want to kind of cause any problems so I just I just kind of left that we decided to leave that out of it you know we wouldn't want to cause any problems so anyway this is the torch and this is one that he had and he offered it to sell it so I ended up buying this torch from him and again it is the ultra jet this is the powder that I already had because I've got one of these at the shop. I showed it in an old video, but it's the old style. It was my dad's. And then so this is the powders that I have left over from that batch. I used to have a lot more than this, but over time, these, uh, these bottles, they start breaking and falling apart. And I, and I just, I couldn't save it all. I go into the box and these things were busted and I lost a lot of the powder. So bought the new ultra jet and i got uh, all three tips so basically you have a small medium and large tip for whatever size got a new catalog from eutectic there that's got all their products any kind of welding product is in this you know whether it be electrodes welding wire brazing rods powders for both spray welding and the utiloy powders all kinds of cool stuff in that catalog there including the equipment for spray welding so any of you guys interested in spray welding this is who you contact, Eutectic Castellin. Go to your welding supply. They can sell that stuff to you. Air Gas, Westco, or whoever your local welding supply is. That's who the distributor is. And then, so we'll come over here. This is some of the uh, sample work that we you know, are practicing on right here. This is what we started with right here. So this is some of the buildup work that we were doing with the torch. We started with this side right here, doing our buildup couple of these spots right in here we were using our uh, the the harder powders i forget which one it, which one it was but there's a couple powders i have that get up to about a 60 rockwell you know like hard facing really hard stuff one of them's got a carbide probably that one right there you can see it looks a little more grainy these get super hard and you can see some more build up that we did right there just this just a uh, steel plate by the way all right, and then this is a piece of cast iron that Lance had, and what we were doing with this, we, we put the small tip in, and we were practicing like a small edge buildup with the torch right here, and you can see along this edge, and also this edge right there. And this, this type of work is what Lance was really interested in because what he wants to do is he's got this job right here. He's got these gears that he's gonna be trying to fix for a friend, 
that goes to a very old machine and they want to try to salvage these gears and reuse them. So he was originally gonna braze these things up, you know, braze them and machine them and reuse them. And he's been very intrigued with the Udaloy process. And so he wanted to learn about it. So he reached out to the company Udaloy and uh, you know, the rep decided he wanted to come by and have a conversation and, and that's what he did. So he uh, came by and shown us how to use the torch properly so that we could use it for jobs like this you know see his teeth you can use that small tip to build these gear teeth up instead of using a brazen rod and it works extremely effective and you have different types of powders that's going to be a lot better than just a standard brazing rod you have the uh, chrome tech the powder that he recommends for a lot of what we're going to be doing is this right here this nitec and it's machinable this is great powder for cast iron right here. So you can use that or you can use this chrome tech right here. And this right here is this right here is Nitec as well. Just the newer bottle. I just poured it out of that in this. So Lance has uh, actually going to be uh, buying one of these torches himself as long with a, a new jug of powder. And he's going to start getting his practice in on um, doing this type of work right here he wants to use the system to uh, build these gears up and do the machining and get these things repaired so that's where we're at on that i'll show the footage of our practice sessions on that me and him is probably going to play around with it and we do want to uh test out these two that were the hard i believe it was these three we're going to put these on the rockwell hardness tester and see actually where these uh, test out at on hardness and then we'll start getting to our um, our parallels as well. So you preheat the beam. If you look at the color here, it'll start to turn kind of like a blue color, like yep, that. There See it? it is. Yep. See that color? Yep. Like that. And that's kind of like a color indicated by 700 degrees right there. Okay. And there's two ways to put this on. One is to spray it. And, and put, put a light coat on and infuse it. Okay. Or spray, or spray as you go. So, as soon as we got a light coating on there, we, we might just put a light coating. Full, full engagement there. You just have it yeah. wide open? Yeah, wide open. Okay. And that's called. And then you can come and infuse it in with the flame. That's all I did, yeah. So it's sitting here now. We can just kind of wet it with yeah, the flame. Yeah, going on. So full trigger. Just you're just uh, yeah moving it with respect to how much coat you want to. That's put. right. And, yep. see, and you can see the reflection yep. the wetting, yep. of the material. You can see the flame at the very bottom. You see it? That is slick as shit. Yep. See it? Yeah. And it was nice and clean, so it's not lifting. And we got maybe about, maybe, I don't know, 7,000 or something like that on it. You're smelling quite a bit more now, aren't you? Oh, yeah, because yeah. Right, right now I'm spraying and I'm spraying and, and fusing as I go. So you're just false in the product. Just, just like just, you're doing a weld build. I thought I get bam, yeah. bam, yep. and all sense. that does is regulate the amount of yep. product coming through this bottle. Yep. Okay. Yep. Your turn. Uh, you want me to do it? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw you, and then angle the flame. Okay. Just punch it a little bit. Punch it. Let it fuse. Punch it. Let it punch it. Again. Again. You're running out of oxygen, I can feel it. See, you see the angle? Yeah, you don't want to angle it directly it's down in it because it starts to oxidize it. Okay, so you want to tilt your, your heat. Go ahead again. So, 
Just like raisins. You know, when yeah, raisins, yeah, you don't keep yeah. it right on the color. As soon as they mean, melt, yeah. then you move on. And then at your toward the end, you angle that, that torch even more the other way. The other way. It's done. And you flip. Yeah. And you come up over it. Yeah. Okay. Again, punch. Punch and go. Out. Okay. So, so you're applying some. More. Yeah. More. Okay, you're moving a little faster than I thought you would there. Yeah, because you know why? Because you already got the preheat on to it, see it? So you're just on and off. That's how you do it? That's it. That's it. Now you got a little overspray right there. I'm going to let go. You're in charge. You okay with the meat? The tip distance. Yeah, that, you're good. You're good. You're good. That's good. And this is looking good. Yeah. I just want to make sure it's fused on the other side. That, you see how that's fusing? Yeah. yeah. When you get it too hot, it starts to bubble. Cool. Your, your angle is good. Oops. I'm just seeing how uh, how hot the work piece. That's normal though. Yeah. Okay. Trigger. Okay. That's good. That's so if you want to do a little something on the yeah. end, like like that tooth. Yeah. The flame should be a little bit. You need more tank pressure. No, no. See what I'm doing? Yep. Mm -hmm. Just a very tiny, tiny repair. Actually, my next door neighbor's been there. Yeah. What's his name? Her. Huh? Her. Her. What's her name? Do you know? I got it on my phone. Okay. She's renting. See how nice that is? Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Wow, wow, so you can really, you see, can really I, can do some I can put some, work. Yeah, yeah, like on a, even on a, right. on a pocket, yeah. on a pocket knife. So if you just want to build that tip up, you just got to move it. Yeah, you don't want to melt it down. Build it up. Yep. yep. So let's say it's that, we're building up that too. Yeah. I know I should know my, my next door neighbor, but she, That's all right. she's been renting for a year and a half. And she's I'll got, probably know her. You think? In Jacksonville? Mm -hmm. She actually owned her own clinic, and I guess something happened. She had a bad partner. You're, you're plenty hot. Just kind of pump it a little bit, a little bit. Pump it. Oh, see? I see. Pump yeah. It. Pump it. Just a little. Chick -chick. You can't really do that with brazing or even TIG. Mm -hmm. You've got to come a little closer. There you go, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, see yeah, it coming yeah. up now. Yeah. See it coming yep. up? See it? And that's what you do with those that's teeth. Crazy. That's the tip you need. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. You need that tip. Isn't that cool? Oh my god, you could do sculpture work with this. Mm-hmm. You could. Beautiful. It gets too hot, then it gets those little, what it goes, crystals. Yeah, I can see them. They see the crystals? Sparking. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's too hot, so you just get off it. See how he's spraying, we're, 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 and and, and yeah. you're not having too much overspray. You notice that because you're you're melting that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Remember what I told you about the angle? Oh yeah, we if, got if, the if, wrong if, angle. If, if you keep going down, that whole thing is just gonna just. Okay. Yep. Yeah. He's gonna make a gear tooth here for me. Yeah. Oh yeah. And if it gets too hot. Pull on. Sweet. What about that? Yeah, I like sweet. it. I like it. it looks like sweet it's working. Sweet and pretty. Yeah. I don't remember which one I did, but it was a file wouldn't even cut it. Yeah, My so God, hard. you can do some seriously fine. Like, mm -hmm. look how thin that is. Uh -huh. Yeah. So just give it a little, a little bump, and keep moving. And then, um, yeah, and then move up. 
I, I got it right there. Okay. okay, look. Now compare. Wait. Compare the veterinarian to the experienced machinist. I'm, I'm kind of almost keeping up. Come on, it's all about the hands. Yeah. <laughs> Did I torture your camera? No, I just I don't want to buy a new one. Ah! <laughs> yeah, it's all about the hands. You want to? Here. So what powder is this again? This is a. Uh, Tungsten carbide, nickel chrome with tungsten carbide. You got it? Yeah. See, it's a different. It's, it's it different. wets differently. Yeah. Wets well, a lot differently. It's, yeah. It's more, holy smoke. It's more yeah. severe. Yeah. But wow. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you another powder that came in your kit that wets better than everything. But see, you're, what you're doing is you're, you're melting those carbides. Uh huh. But you can hit that with a file right now. If you like. Well, let's see what it does. This is the. It's scratching it. But you see, it's not cutting it though. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's polishing it. Yeah, it's just. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. See it? Nothing's happening. All right. See, well, yeah, a bit already. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, this is the one that we did with the other powder. That's too warm for me to hold oh, on it'll to. Bite, it'll bite nice. The, uh, the, the nickel? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That bites yeah, nice. See, that's, yeah, it cuts it no problem. That's cutting right there. That yeah. one, it just slides across. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and that's got we nickel should... chrome bar and tungsten. Oh, you, you already took that off, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, I was going to say. You want to do well, Let's come back to that one. And what I want to do, Adam, is let's spray a, like a, a dime-sized puddle of it. Sure. Uh -huh. and, and then we'll, we'll hit it on the uh, yeah. hardest touch there. Here. Oh yeah, okay. That would be really interesting to see. Okay. Well, you know, we can put on the hardest test on that. Put up the, uh... That nickel chrome yep. boron That's bit is yeah. the ultimate. That is awesome. What a great finish. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. We can do this. Yep. So this is our uh, this is our sample piece where we were out there practicing with my Utiloid torch, doing uh, just some uh, weld samples here on this. This is a, just a piece of steel. It was probably just some hot roll plate that we uh, just dressed off with the grinder. So anyway, we, uh, we, we practice with three sample powders, and these are powders that I already had. These are some stuff that I've had in my possession for many years that uh, originated from my dad. And uh, so I've got them marked here. This one right here was, I believe, the, the, the grid alloy, and this one is the Borotech. So these two right here are the ones that get really hard at uh, up to around 60, maybe six, up to 64 Rockwell. And then these are, the, these are just the buildup, and including this in here, of the uh, Nitec. And the, the Nitec is the good, this would be the powder that we're going to be using if we're uh, building up cast iron, such as like a gear, a gear tooth. All right, so these are going to be the softer, machinable powders. These powders here are not machinable. You would have to grind these. But what I want to do is actually just test these for hardness and see actually where we can actually test these out for hardness right there, okay? The grid, the grid alloy here actually has more carbide in the powder so that's why it looks more uh, more coarse so this is like a, a good wear resistant surface right there just flipping it around this is the first end that we started on using the uh, the the uh, nitec and you can see just how nice and smooth that bead is on that end really builds up excellent and then we switch to a smaller tip here on the corners to practice our uh, our edge build up and so if we're trying to build up say a, a gear tooth or a, or an edge 
if you're trying to build up a surface and you're trying to get to the edge, you can use that small tip and you can see where I've been cutting it with a file right there. You can see that it that's perfectly machinable. So just wanted to show, you know, in comparison to say like a, uh, a braze using a brazing rod. All right, so we're using Lance's hardness tester here and we'll just go ahead and start with the grid alloy. Just pick a good spot. The uh, plate is not perfectly flat, we'll say that, just because we've had so much heat on it from our practice sessions here. But this is us just playing and experimenting. Not anything important. Okay, I think I'm doing everything right. Let me go ahead and release it. All right, so we're at uh, 58. Yep, it looks like uh, there's 50, and I'd yeah. call that 58 on your yeah. dial there. Absolutely. And this one is uh, pretty, pretty close to being correct. Yeah, the the Wilson set next to it, I doubt it's in the in the camera's view, is, yeah, is this running. Guy. What do I want to say? 10 percent high. I recently right. said that wrong. I said low, but it's high. It's running. Uh, yeah, 10 percent high because the weights are not correct. Somebody yeah. made a weight for the back of the Wilson, so I. I, had a, I actually had a company come in here and, and, and calibrate it, and it was off. So. Okay. All right. So that's why we're going to use this one over here. So we're pretty close. So, yeah, the bottles on that. So that was the grid alloy. I don't think this bottle actually tells you, but in the book it does. tells you what the rock well, and it depends on your base metal too. So if you start welding on a base metal, it's going to change your, your rock well. Okay, so this for the Borotech, which is going to be the next one, says Rockwell hardness 55 to 62 on that okay so cool. let's so yeah. let's go ahead and uh we'll move it on down to the Borotech and we'll go ahead and rinse and repeat here and we're getting our preload Yours moves so much faster than mine, man. It goes around real slow, and you got to wait for it. And oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Well, this, like I told you, what are you getting on that? Fifty-four. Yeah. It's right it in works. line. What the yeah. uh, what it say? Um, Fifty-five to sixty-two. Yeah, and so it, it's know, right there. I don't cool. have this one calibrated because it could be, you know, off by a couple points. It's good enough yeah. for what we do. Yeah, I mean, we're we're kind of proving that the, the powder is kind of doing what it says it's going to do. Uh, just for fun, let's go ahead and check the, uh, we'll check one of the Nitec beads right mm -hmm. here. It's going to be substantially softer. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I think on, in the book that it actually shows the B scale on some of the Oh, yeah. The, the yeah hardness. So it'll be a, a very low C. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wanted to point something out when you get that lined up right under your thumb when you're, when you're done there. Oh, this here? Oh, okay. Yeah, All under, right. underneath the edge build up. All right, let me get this preloaded here and we'll uh Yeah, what do you want to say? If you look, I don't know if the camera can pick it up. You can see overspray on this that's textured that hasn't actually been flowed in. Mm -hmm. One thing we talked about, it's not an inexpensive process to do. Yeah. You know, and there's a fair amount of waste of powder. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought that was interesting, you know, that you can see where we actually was wetted correctly, but then below that rough texture is all stuck on, but probably not yeah. appropriately bonded. And I think some of the overspray that we got in some of the other areas will improve with, uh, with practice and uh, experience also. <laughs> it sure will. It sure will with me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's see. Oh, we want this one here. Yeah. That's got to be way low. Yeah, yeah. when you reload it, be able to be... run. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there yeah. you go. 12? Yeah. So, yeah, so it's showing 12. Yeah, it's not even the right scale for that yeah. material, though. Okay. Yeah. But there you go. Mm -hmm. You can see, though, it's a, it's machinable. Mm -hmm. All right, so there we go. Having some fun with our uh, with our eutectic torch and another fun way to apply some metal in a, in a much different way than a, than a boring old brazing rod. <laughs> Yeah, it was a wonderful learning process. Yeah. I was talking to Adam this morning when we were eating breakfast about 
understanding the cold versus hot methods of yeah. of these particular welding techniques. I'm looking forward to getting my new torch and see how good it did there. Going. Yeah, look it's at fantastic. that. Fantastic. I mean, it went yeah. right up to that edge there. Yeah. I mean, you can see we were we were roughing it right there with the overspray. Yeah, that was probably but, me. But look at this end. I mean, look, yeah. I think it turned out beautiful that yeah. buildup. This was multiple passes across that. Right. And you see how built how. It, how it did on the buildup. I just, for me, and I was telling Adam, I just like having a material that's more similar to the parent material mm -hmm. and both in appearance, uh, you know, as well as in yeah. structure. Um, like when I'm doing old machinery repair and when you're done, you won't know. If you do it well, you won't hardly be able to tell. Exactly. If it's done, it'll almost look original. A brazing rod is going to look like a piece of brass is in there. Exactly. And yeah. the, these are going to blend in to look more like cast iron. Yeah. And, and keep in mind, if you if you get a catalog with from Eutectic, there's got to be 25 different powders in there for all different kinds of applications. It's yeah. not a one one powder fits all and they're changing so, the numbers on some frequency yeah and so yeah, the numbering these, system these, is different yeah some time. of these are very old yeah so. yeah all right well i think we're gonna go play with the uh the planer now we're gonna go get it in the shop Woohoo! let's do it all right well we made it back to the shop and i wanted to kind of give you one one little overview of the uh, utiloy stuff right there and uh, so I ended up buying the this ultra kit, ultra jet kit from um, from the rep there at Eutectic, uh, the one that we were using in the video. That this is one that he had, and uh, offered. It was one of his for sale right there. So I ended up buying it. I'll show you that. And and Lance did end up buying. A, he he ordered a brand new kit from uh, Utiloy as well as some powders there. But I wanted to show you. So this is my. This is my original torch right here, and this is one of the older styles right there. You know, they don't make this anymore, but this is the one that, that I've always had for a very long time, and and it still works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just the older one, and, and once I used the Ultra Jet, I really liked the uh, the fit and feel of it. I liked the uh, the guard and the, and the rest for it, so since it was for sale, I, he gave me a really good deal on this used kit, so I just picked it up. All right, so we've got that. I wanted to show, this is what the old school one with the guard looks like. And then of course I got all, these are my powders that I've had that I bought with that kit a long time ago. My, uh, my buddy Joe down at the welding shop, what I ended up doing, uh, this was years ago, probably more than 20 years ago, that I was uh, wanting to get into the spray welding. And uh, his dad, David, who was uh, owned and run the shop at the time, told me that he had his Eutectic kit there as well as the Rototech, which I use for spray welding. He had this and all the powders. He made me a heck of a deal on everything because he wasn't using it anymore. It was just one of those systems that seemed like everybody had just sat down and stopped using. And uh, he sold me the torch, both torches and all the powders that he had for a hundred bucks. And that was just a screaming deal. And I was really getting into it. So, you know, of course I bought it. So that's where this torch come from. And that's what I have left of the powders. I've actually, lost a lot of the powders just simply because these bottles are getting so old that they, they, they start to disintegrate and they crack and they fall apart. So I had all these powders in a box and just all those years, you know, I go into the box and I open it up and these things are just falling apart and all the powders just laying everywhere. So this is what I got left of them right there. And uh, just, you know, a couple of the, the common ones that's always used is the, the Chrome Tech. So let's take a look at this UltraJet kit that I that I bought from the uh, the rep there now this is this this does need a little bit of uh, work done to it you can see that the uh, glue has finally let go and this is the piece here that goes in the lid that holds some of your accessories you know such as your torch tips right there all right and then this is just a little foam protector it goes over it so there we go it's a basic kit it doesn't have every single thing that would have come with it originally but the main thing is that we've got our UltraJet torch that we need. I really love this uh, updated style over the over the old school one, you know, the original model right here. Yeah, with the guard that you can adjust there. It's, it, it serves as like a rest there as well, so you can, you know, hang it there, set it right there on your table when you're done using it, or you can hang it up on the wall if you want to. So 
and it's got the uh, shutoff valve on it I like there as well so whenever you're uh, whenever you're using the torch you leave this trigger all the way open that allows the gas and the oxygen to go through and if you want to shut it off quickly you just pull that and it just shuts everything off you want to reignite it open that trigger there and just light it again and you don't have to readjust your uh, settings there so there's that that kit I wanted to show you that and we've got our three different size uh, welding tips so these are the other two you have three sizes three general use sizes uh, different different tip sizes there for doing real fine detail work you know medium work and then you know the course the heavier work if you got to really put down a lot of a lot of material or you got a big heavy big heavy casting that you're working on comes with a striker and a, uh, a tip cleaning kit right there so there we go there's the uh, this is the ultra jet and I want to show you this kit right here and, and go into uh, just a little bit more quickly uh, of what some of the uses can be uh, you know achieved with this torch kit right here so this kit here I bought used just like you see it right here I haven't ever used it I haven't used any of the powders out of it and it was in excellent shape and this lid actually slides off but I just went ahead and took it off so that you could you can see we've got some information there on the back that I was going to show you one of the reasons I wanted this kit is because of all this information that uh, come with this but uh, nearly a complete kit it is missing the uh, the hoses that would come with it and the other thing that was missing that I didn't think about whenever I bought it was the guard that goes on to the torch right here as you can see see my old one's got the guard this one's missing and kind of funny this has got a repair tag on it dated 1973 and I don't think it's been used since then it originally had tape over the trigger to hold that down tape over the nozzle right there for the powders tape over the welding tip so I, I think this thing was just put into a closet and never used again once it was uh, prepared you got the uh, the tips there the torch tips these hook up to your regulator so that you can split off and uh, have say you know your your uteloid torch hooked up to your tanks and you can have another uh, welding torch hooked up to your uh, your tanks there as well that's how a mine is set up so that you can always have two different torches set up at any time and I really like this kit it come with these application logs which is really neat so these are like little flashcards that give you a bunch of examples of the different repairs that one can you know use this kit for there's all kind of applications in here for uh, you know heavy industry so there'd be shaft repair there's uh, you know say like this right here it's some kind of uh, casting draw die there was a machining error that needed to be welded back up you could use it for something like that this is uh, an engine block that come out of you know, fresh out of it being cast and it had some imperfections you go around that edge and build it up and on the back of these cards it actually gives you tells you what torch where to set the regulator at you know and uh, what powder to use for for the buildup a motor block cast iron this would be one for uh, hard facing so it looks like a pipe there and you would go on the inside and build it up with like the tongue tack or one of the other uh, hard or wear, uh, wear facing materials to help prevent the bore of that being being worn a lot of applications uh, one of the applications that a lot of guys might might get right off is for the hard facing is uh, bush hog bush hog blades or lawnmower blades so you can take something like that boro tech or the tongue tech and run along the edge of your blades and it creates a hard face on there that's more wear resistant and you can go longer times without having to uh, you know sharpen your blade it keeps from wearing out the soft steel so anyway I want to show you these these are really neat right there I don't want to bore you with all those but this is good information to have it comes with this kit right this little tag right here that tells you where to regulate your um, your regulators for your gas you know and this is one of the original books that's got all of the the information for all of the different products that Uteloy sold this was the this was the original paper that come in there as well so if I go open it up without tearing it so it's what the kit looks like and it gives you all your application you know your different different powders and alloys that you use for the repairs so let's look at this real quick 
and this shows you the different types of applications that can be used you know so direct overlay direct cladding build up and filling sheet bonding and even joining so you, you can use this just like you would like if you was the you know silver soldering something you know hard facing that's what i was just talking about if you need a a nice hard re uh, wear resistant face so you use it for tinning there as well so this is what we would most commonly be using this repair kit for is uh, build up and filling so there's a good example like what we talked about at lance's building up a, a broken tooth off of a gear you know use that powder to build it up this shows you the the process that you use for uh, doing that lots of interesting applications direct overlay right here this is they were you know covering the uh, the gear teeth with the uh, material and you can go back and machine it so you have a you know a hard surface there direct cladding that's what we talked about in one of the examples and uh, come down here tells you you know you use this chart to tell you what what material that you're going to use uh, for what type of um, you know your powders what type of base metal that you're welding and the application so pretty neat I love having this kind of information right there since I don't have anybody around here you know teaching me this kind of stuff I'm kind of learning this as I go and this is good reference material right there so anyway I'm real uh, excited to uh, have my new ultra jet and uh, something that, that I do have a lot of interest in and I want to get some more practice in and hopefully apply this to some actual you know real working uh, jobs that we can show here on the channel all right